Hey y'all, ahalam asahalam, bienvenidos. Welcome back to my channel. Thanks for checking it out. Um, I have a different setup. I feel like I always have a different setup. <laughs> I've been moving around. I moved two times this year. First time my lease was up, second time I got married. So yeah, sorry about all the different backgrounds, but I'm um, trying to see what fits best. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna talk about my marriage in this video how i got to the point of being able to get married my marriage testimony um i'm going to tell you my journey of getting there i know like uh, when i was single wanting to be married it was hard i was looking up all types of marriage testimonies and videos and all types of stuff and that gave me hope so i'm hoping that this video also gives hope especially through the struggle that i went through i'm sure some can relate um, as they watch this video um, in my next video i'll talk about my actual journey with my now husband um how we met dating process and all that stuff but this one is just just basically saying how i got to him and how god led me to him uh but first things first if you are new thank you for coming back um <laughs> in this channel on this channel i talk about what i'm learning to grow and know how to live well with christ and for christ so if you want to learn more about that or um hear my music as i'll be posting more music as well working on some singles um, then feel free to subscribe and if you're excited about this video if this video helps you give it a thumbs up um, and comment whatever you want any questions more you want to see uh, any questions about our relationship or whatever uh, just comment below let me know um, or you can message me on my website faithismore.com I'm working through those messages I am slowly but surely I apologize for all those I haven't replied to yet but I'm trying it's a lot more than I expected but thanks y'all anyway on to the video also thanks for those who have been watching and have been patient with me all the times that I haven't posted <sighs> I'm trying I'm trying life is life you know I'm trying to figure things out but thanks y'all so back to the video um my marriage testimony I don't know if either of you have watched or I don't know if any of you have watched my testimony um, to Christ video um, it, you can check it out on my channel some of those things might be related uh, with this but just starting it off um, by the way I have notes so if you see me looking down okay I'm trying to do better than my testimony video actually have some direction so okay <sighs> to start it off um, ever since honestly I can remember when I was young mainly maybe starting in middle school I always wanted a husband or a boyfriend to get to a husband that was my desire you know forever probably all the romance novels that I was reading all the rom-coms that I watched <sighs> too much influence SMH even though I still love them I see <laughs> moderation may have been good for me as a child but I love to read mainly romance novels so I really wanted that boyfriend or husband um, I believe God gives us desires. I do believe also that we can um, idolize those desires. I was kind of doing that as it leads me to um, men. Um, growing up, I was, you know, more shy, more nervous. I wanted a boyfriend, but I wasn't trying to approach. So I didn't really get to into like um, actually uh, getting pursued by guys as much. Um, kind of in high school, but mainly in college is when that started. So. Um, I was talking to different guys, um, not at the same time, because I didn't like to do that, but still, throughout college, I had different guys that I was talking to, none of whom wanted to commit, uh, which every time that happened, it kind of, it broke me a little bit, but it also get, uh, kind of um, lessened my hope for someone wanting to actually commit to me, and it also made me fearful and nervous that guys will leave me um the first time i was like we don't really need to commit it's cool he's obviously wanting to talk to me not talking to anyone else it seemed um but as once i got to the point of wanting to actually commit and they did it i started seeing a trend i started being more and more fearful fearful with each guy that came um and it got to a point where i got more and more desperate so my standards got, became less and less and less and obviously you know you can have two crazy standards where it's like super picky you want him to look like this speak like this walk like this talk like this only do this all this stuff I'll, obviously a lot of times standards can go haywire and we should just not have too much but my standards were getting brittle like they didn't have to be christian they didn't have to um have the same values as me they didn't didn't matter if they drank or smoked or or uh, well that shifted around but it didn't matter if they cursed or whatever 
I was just like, as long as they're nice and they look good and they talk to me, you know, it'll be great until that stumbled into a situation that I regretted afterward because I got hurt um, and they were pretty open about, you know, everything, but I didn't believe um, where they were at. I had hoped that they wanted to commit to me and me only, but they weren't in that position at the time. Um, so I got into a situation where I regretted things I did and I reg just regretted the whole thing and I was so hurt um, because they, they had other interests and I didn't have those same interests. Just, I'm trying not to be specific, <laughs> but basically got into a bad situation because I had lowered my standards of what I wanted and what my values were. Not to say that that person was bad, but to say that they didn't match with what, what was good for me. Um, and that kind of tore me down. This was still in college. And so finally I was like, God, you know, okay, I'm gonna go back to my standards. I don't even know if I prayed this to God. This could have just been a me thing. And was like, you know what? Obviously they're hurting me. I'm tired of guys. I'm just trying to graduate because this was senior year. I'm just trying to graduate college. There's no way I'm gonna find a guy by the end of the year. So I'm just gonna wait till I graduate. And I'm no longer having these low standards. They gotta be Christian. They can't drink. They can't smoke and they can't curse. Those are my val those are my standards. That's as deep as I got. That's as far as I got. <laughs> but those are my standards. And again, I don't remember, but I might have said this in my testimony video, but I'm telling you, I'm getting to the point. Um, so with those standards came another dude, um, the last dude I was talking to in college. Um, and uh, I saw that, you know, he said he was Christian. I noticed that he didn't curse. He said he didn't drink or smoke. And I was like, wait a second, is this God answering a prayer? I'm not even sure I prayed. Man, this must be, he must have brought it because he saw that I was recommitting to the right guy. Not necessarily recommitting to God, though I was getting closer to him, joining Bible studies, mainly to cover up my guilt from the last situation. But I was like, this guy has to be God. And I was excited. Um, at first, you know, this guy was like, eh, I don't know, man, because I had a stigma against this type of what he did. Anyway, he was an athlete. I had a stigma against them, judgmental and all that stuff. So I was like, I don't know. Um, but as I got to know him, I was like, OK, wait, maybe he's different. You know, he seems different from all the other guys, um, you know, seemingly or whatever. Um, he was good. And like I said, he had the four qualifications. <laughs> um, um, and as we continue to talk um, later that or hang out or whatever um my senior year um i got to a point where i was like okay are we committing or not because i'm about to graduate and again in my past situationships there was no commitment so i got more and more fearful that no one wanted to commit so i pushed it even more so i did that to this guy and he was not ready to commit he said it from the jump that he was cynical about relationships but i was like i'll be that person he's not cynical about you know i had a lot of hope again i think from these romance novels i had a lot of like hope like i'm the person that will make them want to commit or have a relationship even though it wasn't happening so at that point he said he wasn't ready to commit i though thought that he would change his mind because he wasn't necessarily saying he didn't like me anymore. So I had hope. And um, after I graduated, I went to God and was like, God, I want to know if he's my husband. Like, is he the guy you have for me? Even though he said he didn't want to commit at that time, I had heard stories and testimonies um, of people who like, you know, the guy said they didn't want to be with them right then. And they waited and then they came back. So I was like, you know, or, Eventually I heard stories like that. So it reinforced this idea that he could want to come back, especially since he didn't say he didn't like me anymore. So I was asking God, like, maybe this could be the one. Maybe he's just not ready. What do I do? God, is he it? You know, I was asking. This led me, this led me to seeking God more, to know who he is so that I can hear his voice. Um, and that's when I really got close to God. Um, that right after graduation um, i was really reading my bible really wanted to know who he was i was really praying um listening got into listening watching a lot of youtube videos about you know sir i watched a lot of sermons a lot of youtube videos about marriage and hearing from god and spiritual gifts all that stuff and this uh question um by the end of the summer i felt like god answered and he said yes he is your husband and i was like oh my god 
I was going crazy. I told my closest friends only, but I was like, this gotta be, this is, this is great. I was so excited. So that led me to, you know, pray some more, um, ask God to reveal it to him, wait, because at this time, though I graduated, I was still at the university because I stayed a year for a job that I wanted and he was a year younger, so he stayed there as well. So I was like, okay, this is the year he's going to come back. And I, um, I watched more videos about these type of things happening to other women where they prayed, um, God revealed to them their husband, the guy either didn't know or they had left them already and they came back and now they're married or whatever. I heard that personally and on YouTube and so I was excited, got, um, I got closer to God wanting to learn more about spiritual gifts in this journey because I needed God at that point because it it deeply hurt to be away from this person who I thought was my husband or at least to feel rejected by this person who has not come yet who had not tried to be with me or anything like that yet um so it was a constant rejection almost every day which caused more and more pain and I needed God to help me through the days bring joy remind me of hope all those things um <laughs> two years later I had moved by that point um, this other person, the guy had moved as well somewhere else. Um, and I was still like, you know, waiting. I was wanting God to move. I was wondering what was going on, but I had faith that he would move and, you know, bring this guy, you know, I don't know what happened. I heard stories and everything. And then come the shutdown 2020, you feel me? Come the time to reflect because you're stuck in your house. <sighs> This is when I think, I'm trying to remember the exact timing, but I remember, I remember like it was April, 2020. I had gone home at this time, like back with my parents. Cause I was like, I could just stay here for a month. And I don't know why I did this, but I did maybe cause free food and a lot of people were doing it. And I could see my family cause I could work from home, that kind of stuff. So I went, back to my parents house with my um, I think my sisters were there as well at the time um, and just did some more reflecting and prayer and I felt like um, I was clinging on to this guy too much where I was just confused and I realized I shouldn't be going th through this much pain and trauma if it's God's will or should I be so I went to God and I totally let the guy go in terms of I was like God you know whatever your will is I'll let him go if he's not for me just you know let him let him go basically I was like I'm gonna let God <clears throat> do his thing and I tried this before but in the back of my mind I was like I let him go you know I'll, I want your will I surrender to you but I believe that you he's for me so I'm not really letting him go so it hadn't really worked before but this time I was like okay I let him go. I got to give it to God because it's been two years. Um, there's got to be something that's maybe not right or or if he's for me, God will bring him regardless. But I got to let him go. So I ended up telling the guy, like, I'm sorry if I like, caused anything for you, or I'm sorry if I'm being pushy or whatever, but um, I'm gonna let, I don't even remember what I said, but I said something to let him go, okay? <laughs> um, and at that time, I, I realized like, I don't think this guy's for me. Like, I think I'm actually wrong. And I started playing it through because there were signs that I thought God said it was, he was for me, like, um, when I thought he said yes, it was like an overwhelming sensation, an overwhelming feeling, which I felt was the Holy Spirit saying yes, even though it could have been the Holy Spirit, but I don't know if he was saying yes after a while. But there was another moment, um, I forget, but um, I started to realize um, that a lot of it could have been my own desires because of pain and hurt, and that I had never even gone to God in the first place about this guy. This was a like, confirm, can you, God, can you confirm that this guy is for me, even though I never asked you in the beginning, but before I caught feelings, right? So after a while, I realized I was just wrong and I needed to move on. And letting go of not just the guy, but 
a person who I thought could be my husband and wanting having that desire for so long to have a husband it was almost like you know uh, it was almost like a divorce it was almost like you know I I lost my husband like kind of thing um, just because I really thought God said that and I had bonded with people who were going through similar stories so I really had believed it and um through through that it was just super painful and i couldn't even think about being with another dude i was like i just can't i just oh it was hard it was hard okay thankfully during this i was also going through counseling my counselor knew about the situation so she was there before and after so that was good uh, but it was it was a lot of time that, or i should say it was a lot of it was a lot of uh being willing to experience the pain in order to get through it so I was hurt but let him go healing didn't want to be with anybody anymore I was like there's no one else for me I'm done I can't I can't even think about being with someone and then about maybe a month or two later so maybe like beginning I think actually maybe a few months later I think it was like midsummer um I got to a point where I was starting to feel better uh, I made a YouTube channel. <laughs> I uh, was getting closer to God because I needed him again because I was going through that pain and that hope started to come up again of another like being able to get married, have a husband um, and I feel like God was revealing to me like I have someone better for you. I have someone that fits you better I should say um, and just bring that hope back but I was like how am I supposed to meet him is this even right this is too quick after this whole last thing I should wait a year I need to go on a year man fast so I tried to do that but I felt like that's not what God was trying to get me on he was like no it's gonna be quicker than that you know um so I started preparing again and I forgot to mention this, but before when I thought that guy was my husband, those two years of like waiting, I did do a lot of, um, watch a lot of videos and uh, talk to people, read stuff about how to prepare to be a wife, like spiritually, physically, um, mentally, um, different things to do. So I did try to prepare, um, try to, um, you know, be my own person, figure out my own purpose, stuff like that, where, um, and, and also figure out like, you know, learn marital stuff. That's good. I don't, maybe I'll do another video on that. Like uh, preparing to be a wife because I don't want to get into specifics <laughs> be too long. But anyway, I did. But back to this uh, summer of 2020, um, when I was starting to feel better, um, I started to prepare again, watching a lot of relationship videos, Christian relationship videos, what they advise and stuff like that. Um, but I was, I got, I went to God still and I was like, Jesus, how am I supposed to meet someone in the middle of when everyone's stuck in their house, right? <laughs> like, of, of this whole thing. Um, I'm stuck in my house, basically, there's no events going on. Um, uh, how am I supposed to meet anyone? And I feel like he told me, and again, <laughs> this was hard for me to hear anything from God because I would heard wrong for so long. So I was like, is this even you? Oh my gosh. Thankfully, I had situations where I heard from God and told people and it was right and it was true. So praise God that I did experience some good truth from him um, and saw that it was true by being validated, 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 there we go, by other people. But so in this situation, I was able to believe it some and I felt like he said, um, meet people that you wouldn't associate with. I was like, dang, is there pe are there people I wouldn't associate with? Dang, like what the heck? <laughs> like I feel like I'm cruel <laughs> and anyway, I was like what you trying to say Go, like Lord like who, who who would that be I started trying to list like um who what people don't I talk to what kind of people like anyway I, I was like a wake up call I was like dang what you trying to say but I didn't really know what he was trying to say so I was just like okay Lord thanks um back to watching relationship videos and then um he <laughs> I kept asking him and he didn't really give me much more um and and then I stumbled upon upon a few marriage testimonies where they talked about how they met on a dating app and you should try dating apps and uh, a few other videos of the same thing obviously I watched a lot of YouTube at that time I keep saying videos because that's what that was um, and I was like dating apps um that's cool that you met that way but I <laughs> I would never consider I think way back in the way back like in high school I tried it because my friends tried it but 
it was more so like a just to see what it was like. I don't really think I really wanted to meet someone that way, mainly because again, I read all these romance novels and I wanted to meet someone in the cliche way, like um, stumbled in a grocery store on a plane, um, he becomes my best friend and then it turns out he's in love with me. Those kinds of things, you know, those fun stories. That's how I wanted to meet my man. But uh, <laughs> at this time it was, a shutdown, no events were happening. I didn't want to go around people like that because I didn't want to get sick myself. So I was like, maybe these dating apps, I should give it a try. But then I was like, is God leading me? Like, is how is how do I know this is God bringing me to the my husband? Am I forcing God's hand? So it took me a while to even open up to the idea. I never really wanted to. I thought it was kind of gross. I thought people just wanted to hook up on dating apps or if they didn't, I, the idea of swiping faces was like, ah, but then it clicked. God said, meet people you wouldn't want to associate with. And I sure wouldn't have wanted to associate with people on dating apps because again, of what I just said, obviously those aren't fully true, but I was like, they're gross. Or they just want to hook up or they're weird or, or I just don't want to swipe faces. That's so superficial. But here I was. I was like, maybe I should give it a try. I prayed to God like, okay, God, should I do this? I'm scared. Oh my gosh, should I do this? Oh my gosh, are you, am I forcing this? Oh my gosh, help me. <laughs> but I felt good about it. So I tried it and I tried three different apps. One of them was Plenty of Fish. That one I felt gross on because I was getting too many DMs of stuff I didn't want. And I was like, okay, so that's deleted. Then I tried Christian Mingle and the people on there just weren't my type or my age or whatever. I just didn't like the platform. And I didn't like that I had to pay for, to talk to some people. It was just a weird, anyway. So I deleted that one. I was like, man, nothing works. I'm trying to, what the heck? And I only did plenty of fish because someone from the marriage testimony used that. So I was like, maybe it's good. And I did Christian Mingle because Christians, you know? So I was like, I don't even know. I don't want to do Tinder because that's just too risky. Uh, but thankfully, um, my friend who had a boyfriend uh, had met someone on a dating app. And my other friend had also recommended the same dating app uh, to me called Hinge. And you know, I like Hinge. I'm an advocate for Hinge. Let me just tell you right now because one, it's a lot of young people on there. Um, at least maybe I typed in my age and it only showed me young people. So that's probably why. And when I say young people, I don't mean teenagers or like young 20s. I mean like mid 20s or like like 20s in general. So that's what I was looking at and looking for. Um, and then I can also filter if like say Christian or non-Christian or whatever. I'm like, I'm filtering to only show Christians because I'm not trying to waste my time. And I do want to clarify, I meant to do this earlier, that when I started to feel better about everything that had happened, you know, I am, and was more open to find, or was more open to dating and um, just dating in general and get that husband or whatever. Um, I did have to like rip up my list. I watched Michael Todd's new relationship goal series. He was like, rip that list up. And I was like, but I want him to look like this and do this. But I want, I had to rip it up because I wanted it to do, I wanted to do it God's way. And so I was like, God, I'm only doing what you say. I didn't want to date a lot of people. I didn't want to have to go through years of dating. Um, I didn't, I thought, I was hoping that I would just meet him, stumble into him, and be like, bam, that's him. But it didn't happen like that. But, um, <laughs> praise God, I didn't have to go through years of dating. But I did ask God before every guy, um, or at least when I was talking to him, I was asking God about it, about him. Like, is he good? Should I keep talking to him? What should I do? Or just praying about the whole process. So when I was on Hinge, I was like, you know, I was asking God before I got too involved. Unlike all the other situationships I did, I went for them first, got my feelings involved. Then I got hurt. Then I went to God to, to mend something. And that's not how things work. We got to go to, we got to go to God first and continue to go to God as we're talking to this person. And then, you know, God will reveal if this person is right or not before, you know, before it gets too involved, if he's not right, um, you know, God doesn't want us to be, I don't believe God, sorry, I shook the 
came up. But I don't believe God wants us to be in pain or heartbroken. Um, so that's why he wants us to come to him first. So that's what I was doing. And I did have to, I did talk to a few guys um, on there, but it only took a few weeks before meeting Joshua, who is my husband now. Um, thankfully, praise God, because I really did not want to be on there forever. Because it does feel weird sometimes just swiping and be like, nah, not him, nah, not him. Based on their answers to three questions in their photos, like I was like, but I tried to be open, you know. Um, but thankfully I met Joshua and I was able to, you know, we talked and then we, you know, video chatted and I was like, this it, I gotta click up this app. And then we met in person and then, and then we dated for a year and then we got married. Okay, that's not fully true. I didn't explain that well at all. That was a very summarized version, but it wasn't even accurate. So, ba but basically we got married less than a year from meeting each other, okay? I'll get that in the next video. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, now we're married. And it, it was definitely a blessing because though God helped me with healing a lot uh, from the last guy, I wasn't fully healed and I still had deep pain. And praise God uh, for using Joshua because um, Joshua helped um, with that pain, he prayed over me. And if you've seen my other video of my deliverance from that pain, I could watch it and I explain more of that, you know, what happened, but praise God for bringing him into my life. Woo! So that long story, sorry if it's so long, but thanks for listening. Uh, I just wanna say, um, you may wonder, cause I did, uh, why God allowed me to go through all of that that happened with that other guy from college. I'll say one, a lot of that was my decision. Um, I didn't go to God first, like I said, and I really wanted my own desire for a while. Um, but I will say a lot of it, you know, during the process, I, I wanted to, I wanted to want to, uh, I wanted to want God to tell me if this guy was for me or not, and to tell me the truth, but I'm not sure that I wanted to actually, um, I actually wanted it. Like, I don't know if I was ready to hear the answer or wanted to hear the answer. I just wanted to hear what I wanted to hear. You know what I'm saying? But even with all my asking God to really reveal and what's going on, I think God really used that situation to bring me closer to him while also preparing me for to be a wife, you know, because it was coming. It was coming. It was actually coming soon, like in two years, like I was going to meet my husband, you know, so and I was not ready at that time. I thought I was, but that was because I just had the desire. I wasn't ready mentally or emotionally. I wasn't really ready to sacrifice or think about the other person first and not just myself. So many things that I learned in that process um, because I was preparing, because I was going closer to God, because, you know, I was reading his word more, seeking, writing, all that stuff. And it led me to a job that I got to, that led me to a job that was good, um, that also built me spiritually and got me connected with music produ or music producer and stuff like that. It led me to here where I live, where I was able to meet Joshua. Um, so all these things I feel like God used for sure. Uh, but definitely advise, go to God first. But dating apps are, you know, if, if God, if, if it's God's will, you know, go ask God if you should be on a dating app. That's all I'm going to say. They're not bad. But yeah, anyway, okay. Thanks for listening. Um, and if you want, have more questions or want to hear more about this, uh, let me know in the comments. Um, and yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up again, and I will see you guys next time.